Let's pay homage to the lineage gurus. Homage to the venerable Mang Liao Ming. Homage to Master Sakya Zeng Kong. And homage to His Holiness, the 16 Kamapa. And homage to Master Dupton Torji. Homage to the three jewels of the altar. Homage to the main deity of the group practice tonight. The Vaishravana Yellow Jambala. All Dhamma Masters, Dhamma Educators, Dhamma Teachers, Dhamma Lecturers, Dhamma Assistants, Directors of Temples and Chapters, and all Disciples present here and over the Internet. Good evening, everyone. How do you do? よう、you want to play the, maybe after the discourse. No sound. Just cannot make the sound. The people or two Buddha Prasnya Treasury joined the Taipei International Book Exhibition from June 2nd to 7th. And disciples in Taiwan will welcome all of you to visit the book exhibition. And you can also vote to vote uh, the best uh, exhibition of all. So I hope that. You all can vote for it. I hope that the Taiwanese disciples can go visit the exhibition of Dibi Boye in Taipei. And I also hope that you can vote online to support the Dibi Boye. True Buddha Boye. To support the publication of the B Boye, their design exhibition 
so that uh, they can be uh, recognized and approved. Mm. They also exhibit Grammar's uh, paintings, which is very uh, varied and rich. So publisher usually publish the books of an author. There is an in the world. Now I'm writing book number 291. It's rare that we cannot play the video. This rarely happened. Huh? Okay, it's been <laughs> nine years. Now we have the sound, but no video. It's been nine years since our last book exhibition at the International Book Fair in Taipei. The only Dharma king in this modern world who can promote Buddhism harmoniously with literatures and arts is His Holiness Living Buddha Lian the Pipi Boye Culture and Education Foundation is currently presenting the remarkable exhibition of His Holiness works of arts and literatures from the past 50 years at the International Arts and Cultures from June 2nd to 7th at, uh, at the year 2022, 30th Taipei International Book Exhibition held at the Multi Center booth C627. The three main topics are wisdom and compassion, immaculate purity, and perfect realization and conduct. To display the perfect harmony of Buddha Dharma with arts and literatures. Since 50 years ago, the Dharma King Arthur consistently produces books out of the books and have accumulated all the wisdom imaginable for generations to come. 
His will power and assiduous can be seen from the stack of his books as tall as a building. Put together on a wall, we feel as if his holiness waving his hand lovingly to all the readers. In the Lotus series exhibition, we are showing the white lotus as the main topic to symbolize the descent of the white lotus to the Sahara to transmit the tributary tantric dawn. We are also showing his holiness many books with cover designs especially selected from his holiness on paintings from the past 30 years with varying styles to reflect the content of the book. To welcome visitors, our teams are happy to show you around and help in any way you require. All of you to visit, join our club, participate in our activities, and also for the e-books and printed books. Let me share a few jokes first. Today I got on the uh, subway and I feel like I want to let out gas and there's the sound of music so Following the rhythm, I let I farted several times, and then I realized I was wearing the earphone. Uh, we just uh, celebrated yeah. Dragon Boat Festival. So after we eat the bamboo leaf dumpling, remember to exercise, otherwise you gain weight. This is play of work Chinese. Because it's high calorie, you can only eat once, one a day. If you eat two, then you will gain weight. Mm. This is only for people who have uh, read Kung Fu novels, otherwise she wouldn't understand. Mm. Yeah, it's many important Chinese. Mm. 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 This person, Yang Guo, lived in the tomb for many years. How did he cut his nails? The 
有一个叫小昭的嘛，但是张无忌的嘛，《倚天屠龙记》哈，啊，小昭的脚被锁了那么多年，是怎么样子换内裤的 ？If you handcuff or chain for so many years on your legs. How do you change your underwear? Is that the case? <laughs> 以前屠龙记，小昭有被锁了很多年了。链子很长，他锁。嗯，再来，这更厉害了，就是梅超风，不是练了九阴白骨爪吗？那九阴白骨爪的时候，它的指甲很长嘛，是不是？ This is our kung fu related. And someone trained, and they have very long nails. So how do they? How do they wipe their butts? The three mysteries, unresolvable mysteries. Now we get to the question and answer from Malaysia by Lian Hua Li Hong. Please call me Xiao Liu. That is to say, Lian Hua Li Hong, everyone is called Xiao Liu. His problem is 顶礼师，师尊曾说：“修法的专家越细越好。”格玛斯说：“有一红法人说，修法是相应法。The more detailed the visualizations, the better. And there was a Dharma propagator that said that we have to visualize Grandmaster's dimples. But according to what I know, is we have to visualize the dignity of the Yida, and to visualize our lineage root guru, we also visualize him to be like the Buddhas or Bodhisattvas. Didn't talk about the temples. I'm not too educated. Uh, I have read quite a bit of books, but I'm not sure. So my question is, in the Root Guru Yoga, should we visualize the human characteristic of the lineage Root Guru? Do I have temples? <laughs> temples, they said that. It's in Chinese, it's like drinking temples. So that means you can drink. Which side is my temple? Temple, this side. I can always differentiate between left and right. In elementary school, when the teacher said, turn right, everybody turned right except me. And then uh, move forward. They all go that way, and I went the other way. And then after a while, <laughs> how come there's no sound? I turn around and everybody walked the other way. Until, until now, I still cannot 
tail right to from left. Like if the right one is when you raise your hand, that would be the right. Like that, but in English, I just don't know. Turn right. I cannot tell turn right from turn left. visualize the grandmaster's characteristics? I don't know. Nobody ever asked me before if you should visualize my temple. You're the first one. Yes, you can. You can visualize. However, in the statue of Guru Tsongkhapa in Yonghe Kung Temple in Beijing, when the statue was carved and enshrined there, it felt that the Guru Tsongkhapa was seriously looking at everyone. And everybody found him to be too serious. So the sculptor carved two dimples on his red cheeks. Then he did not look. He doesn't look so serious anymore. It looked like he was smiling. And Master Lien Sang from Australia visited Yonghe Kung Temple and took a photo in front of the statue of Guru Tsongkhapa. And afterwards, she turned around and took a look and felt that that's Grandmaster Lu. Because Guru Tsongkhapa also had a temple. So yes, you can visualize Grandmaster's uh, characteristics. And this is my understanding that about my understanding about empty nature. So it doesn't matter what kind of visualization, we need to understand that there is all empty nature and has no self, that the practitioner is empty, the yidam is empty, then the emptiness can match with the emptiness. Only this way, but all kinds of visualizations, um, the union is the union with the yidam. Then you chant the mantra, and meditation is also like a floating clouds. Then you don't care whether about existence and non-existence. Then the body and mind is uh, liberated. Then you won't be able to do what's written in the Vajra Sutra. Then 
不在不用在乎空有的事，身心脱落，自然会做到《金刚经》的四句记。请问大家有何意见 ？What do you think？ 啊、哦，我跟他讲哈、哦。Okay, let me tell him. 你如果在修法观想里面 ，In your visualization during Dharma practice, 持咒 ，Whether you do the Dharma practice, visualize, chant mantra, or form the mudra, 那是法，那个是所谓的密法。That is considered tantric Dharma. 接手印。Visualization, chanting mantra, forming the mudra, entering samadhi. When you enter samadhi, only in samadhi you can talk about emptiness. But when you visualize chanting mantra and、uh, forming mudra, you cannot uphold the emptiness. Because if you do, then you don't think. Then you don't visualize. In chanting the mantra, of course that exists because there's sound. When we chant mantra, we want to chant it loudly, and it has to go through your own heart, mind. In order for the mantra to receive spiritual response, in forming the mudra, you cannot think that the mudra is empty. The mudra is a mudra. You cannot say it is empty. Only when you enter samadhi, that you can have no thoughts whatsoever. You don't need to think any of anything. You don't need to chant. Mantra. You don't need to visualize to chant mantra, nor to form mudra. And only at such time you can enter empty nature. That's hard to explain it. So his understanding of the empty nature. You cannot talk about. The Dharma practice, because the Dharma is established on top of emptiness. And tonight,、uh, in expounding the Malakiti Sutra, we'll talk about this. Ah, 刚刚我们修这个黄真巴拉黄财神的话。We just practice Yellow Jambala Dharma. Let me tell you one thing. 有一个弟子，他住在东南亚的地方。There's a disciple who live in Southeast Asia, and 那个国家，那一个国家的 ，He or she 大乐透奖 ，won the first prize of lottery of that country. 他中了以后，不敢让人家知道。After they won, didn't want to let anybody know. 在坛城面前讲，他是在坛城面前。Said it in front of the altar. 坛城讲。So just talk to the altar. 中了奖以后啊。After you won the lottery. Like you came to the Seattle Temple and kneeled and told the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas on the altar that I won the first prize of the lottery and didn't tell anybody else. Ah, his mother, uh, lives in New York. Lives in New York. And he tells his mother that his mom. Who live in New York City? Was he? They told the mom and asked the mom to write a note for me. His mother also wrote a note for me. So the mom wrote a note for me to let me know. Then I myself, 
也在这个他最坦诚讲的时候。When he spoke in front of the altar, I also had the impression that there was someone who said that they've won the lottery to the altar. And they told their mom in New York City, who wrote a note to let me know that they have won the first prize in lottery. So our Jambala is truly responsive. So one more winner of the lotteries. One of our disciples from Taiwan won the the first prize in the power Taiwan power lottery. And his or her children do not even know that they've won. And he or she came to Seattle to make offering. And his or her son and daughter came along, and I was saying, "Oh, you must be very pleased that." Oh, and then they said, "Please, please, never tell my children, because they've spent too much of my money. If they knew that I've won a lottery, then they wouldn't do anything anymore." I don't know if the son now knows or not. But at the time when his mom was making offering to Grandmaster and Sunu, he was there. And the daughter too, I think. And then the son visited the Seattle temple again. But I didn't dare to ask him if he knew or not that your family have won the first prize of the Taiwan Power Lottery. It's best when you win a lottery not to let anybody know. Just let Grandmaster and Sumo know that's good enough. And there's another one who won uh, three, three billion Taiwanese dollars. That's rare. That's his one out of the four people who won. And after he won the lottery, I was at the Taiwan Lejang Temple. And he wrapped it in the brown bag in a box. And then he took the box. And I was receiving Hatha authoring. All of a sudden, I saw a box flying in the air. Then after he threw the box, he turned around and left. It almost hit me. It shocked me. I was about to... <laughs> I was about to scold him, but when I opened the box, I stopped. All cash inside it. The whole box. So even if it hit my head, 
<laughs> I wouldn't be angry. <laughs> Even if there's a bomb on my head, it can be compensated. Because a disciple winning a lottery and wanting to offer to me and he went he didn't want anybody to know. Someone saw it, which is the mother of a reverend Lin Ming. So there truly are many the school disciples who won lottery. And the one from Brunei who won the lottery from Singapore, uh, two billion dollars, two, no, 200, 200 million dollars, and he made it public when he made offering to me. It wasn't much. But then two masters went to Brunei after after it. One from Japan and one from Taiwan. They went after him to Brunei. One got uh, $90,000 US dollars. And then the other one also in the tens of thousands. Much more than what, what he gave me. So <laughs> I'll never forget it. I only give you these three examples, but there are a few more. Including the first one who was Lian Hua and there were, there were two who won the mega millions. The other one won 160 million US dollars. So Trubuda School is the school of winning lotteries because we have uh, the wealth deities right here. So now we will continue to talk about the Malakirti Sutra. Chapter 1, Bu Buddha verse. Thus have I heard, at one time, the Buddha was in the Amra garden near the city of Vaisali, accompanied by 8,000 great monks, Great Bhikkhus, 32,000 Bodhisattvas, and the assembly of virtuous and knowledgeable spiritual cultivators. The next sentence is known for their great wisdom and fundamental conduct. They have accomplished the great wisdom and fundamental conduct. Just talking about great wisdom, it would be endless. So tonight we will only talk about great wisdoms. So wisdom is prajna. So when we chant the mantra Om Ahum Beja Guru Bhatma Siddhi Hamse Beja Beja means prajna meaning the great wisdom Why do we want to add Beja because all the Buddhas have perfect wisdom. All the Bodhisattvas also have perfect wisdom. All the Arhats also have perfect wisdom. Here 
talks about great bhikkhus, great bodhisattvas, they all have perfect wisdom. There are three kinds of wisdoms. Classified into all wisdom. And the second one, mm, is the seek wisdom. Listen carefully. All wisdom. There are many different names to these three wisdoms. So the first one, so the wisdoms, this is all the wisdom is about what the Dharma brother was asking about emptiness. So the wisdom that everything is empty. So the first one is Ravaka and Pratika Buddha knowledge that all Dharma is uh, empty and unreal. So everything is empty. I often use this analogy about the moon. What do we have on the moon? There are no human beings, no animals. No human beings, no sentient beings. So, no phenomena of self. There is no self. No human beings, no sentient beings, no lifespan. There is nothing on the moon. No time. Time is irrelevant on the moon. There is no function there. Time has no function there. Time is uh, related to human beings, but when there are no human beings, time has no use. And the land on the moon, is it related to us? No. Anybody knows how much uh, a square, a pin, the land costs? We know in the United States how much one acre costs. But on the moon, and Grandmaster is selling the land on the moon. Do you want to buy it? Come for whatever price per acre. Nobody. So you can think that all the land on the moon is yours. And how will you be? Are you going to be a big a landlord? But what use is that? And nobody will buy your land. So what use is being a landlord there? So that's the wisdom of emptiness. So you use this emptiness to uh, to mark human beings. Money is of course useful, but after you die, is there any use? Money is does ma is money of any use to you? No. 
好，你现在房子很大。Now you have a huge house. 你这个房，你这个房子有没有用啊 ？But after you die, is there any use? 死了以后，你房子对你有没有用 ？Of the house to you? Is the house of any use to you? No. 再来，师尊现在开的是 Rolls Royce。And Grandmaster is driving a Rolls Royce now. And Maserati. So the the cars are useful to me now. And one day when I die, so will these two cars be of any use to me then? No. So after I die, the money, the house, the cars are of no use to me. But how about uh, people around you, your wife, your children, your grandchildren? Any use? No. They're all unrelated to you. No, but you're Grandmaster Lu. After you die, is there any use to Grandmaster? <laughs> is Grandmaster of any use to to you, to Grand? 好了，我不讲那么远，就讲卢师尊。Okay, I will not talk about Grandmaster Lu. 那个总统啊。Let's talk about the president. That's the highest position, right? Is there any use? Uh, how many presidents of United States there have been? Like the famous ones, uh, Jefferson, and the one printed on the dollar bills, Franklin, Lincoln. They are very famous. Are they any use? For them? For themselves? No use. Washington was at the highest position. So, if you delve deep, then this wisdom that everything is empty would appear. I often say that the person is in heaven and his money is at the banks. His wife is in somebody else's embrace. And his siblings are fighting for his inheritance. So everything is useless. The only useful thing is you are in heaven. So everything in the world is useless. They have no functions. So if you think this way, then if you have a mindset that everything is empty, then you can eliminate your afflictions. You don't have to worry or be afflicted about anything. Then, when you realize this, you have no afflictions whatsoever. You're that you're, you're nothing at all, including your body. That when the four elements disintegrate, everything is gone. What's left is formlessness. Everything that has form is intrinsically empty. If you often be mindful of this kind of wisdom, then you will not be grasping or attached at anything. Then you just go with the flow. 
to sleep naturally. It's fine. Everything is the best arrangement. It's fine if you have it or not. It's fine whether it's more or less. Everything is fine. And I often say, everything is a perfect in, in arrangement. This is the wisdom of emptiness. This is called uh, the wisdom of everything. Then you think of everything as empty, everything materials like wealth, uh, looks, fame, sleep and food, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body and mind, all empty. Then you will have no afflictions, no attachments. And this is to destroy all kinds of afflictions and attachments. It's a method. So it's the same as a visualization of emptiness, that everything is intrinsically empty, including your own body. Because even the strongest body can become the weakest, and the richest one can become the poorest one. Doesn't matter how strong or how rich you are, at the end, they'll be gone. So, this is the wisdom of everything is empty. Most mundane people will not think about this. What's important to them is to earn money. So sometimes, if you win a lottery, that's good. If you don't, that's good too. That's why I often say that everything is the best arrangement. We just ask for no suffering of pain or illnesses. But uh, honestly speaking, even the suffering is non-existent. Uh, it has an ending. Like uh, you often go to the dentist and to check your teeth and you have cavities, you have gum problem, disease, or you want to, uh, what's that called, you know, to fix uh, your teeth because uh, they don't look good, and we have many dentists here, like Gui Qing, and Dr. Zhuang, and many others who are studying to become dentists. One that is going to Philadelphia, Jessica, So teeth get cavities only when you're alive. But when you die and the person's gone and the only the only teeth left and they would never have cavities. So you only have cavities when you're alive, but after you die, none of those. <laughs> and you never hear those sounds, like the cell phones or anything, nothing. Everything is gone. 
So you don't need to be afflicted because at the end everybody is the same, whether you have this habit or not. Therefore, many uh, spiritual cultivators they would write the character death uh, above their bed, and then they have no afflictions whatsoever because when you die, everything is gone. So that's the wisdom that everything is empty. That's called the wisdom of everything. The second one. The first one, Yi Chie Zi, is about emptiness, and Tao Zhong Zi is about non emptiness. So, Bodhisattvas has the, the first wisdom to cut off all the afflictions and to cut off their own attachments. And what is the second wisdom? which is talking about non-emptiness, about existence. So, so they establish all dharma above emptiness. So what is this dharma? It's the surroundings, the circumstances, all the material things. This dharma actually includes all physical and material Things, so everything. Uh, when you cultivate spiritually, you have to do it on top of everything. If you talk about emptiness, if it's emptiness, so why do you still have to cultivate spiritually? No, you cannot think that way. You still have to practice the Dharma, and the Dharma is established on top of emptiness. And this kind of wisdom is called Tao Zong Zi. Hmm. So it's actually the wisdom of the Bodhisattva, the second wisdom. So what that is, is what can be done, what cannot be done. The precepts is the second wisdom. And meditation is also entered through the second wisdom. That, so you, you start from the Tao Zong Zi to enter into Yi Chie Zi. To enter, so from existence to emptiness, the wisdom of existence to the wisdom of emptiness. So the wisdom of the worldly, of the world, if you want to gain the highest position, to study technology, or in politics, in economy, in the military, all sorts of careers or business is to study uh, skills, knowledge. Uh, uh, agriculture, skills, and a trade all need the wisdom. They need certain wisdom for the world. But in Buddha Dharma, we also need wisdom. All the sorts of wisdoms are called the Tao Zong Zi, which is the second kind of wisdom. So for bodhisattvas, they need to know what precepts they have to keep in order to have attainments. There are many precepts in Buddhism. The countries have their own rules, and families have their own rules, and the temples too have their own rules. So as a bodhisattva, you have to abide by the bodhisattva's vows and follow the precepts. So that is the second wisdom, Tao Zong Zi. 
the result of existence. So only by keeping the precepts you can go to heavens. In Buddhism, we talk about the heavenly realm of form, of formlessness, and of desire. You can go to those heavens. And by abiding by the precepts and performing good, then you can go to all heavens. But to be, to escape the reaper cycle of the six samsara, you need the wisdom to uh, to uh, to be liberated from it. And this is called the second wisdom. So, of the emptiness, there's also non-emptiness. So, how do you balance and harmonize them? That's the wisdom of the Tathagata. You cannot, you cannot uh, go to the side of emptiness, then everything is gone. But you can also tend toward existence because then you become mundane. So it has to be in between emptiness and existence. So that's called dual execution. That's the wisdom of the Buddha. And that is called the third wisdom. So the wisdom of all so today I'm talking if you can harmonize and balance uh, emptiness and existence, that would be the wisdom of the Tathagata. So you cannot talk about emptiness all the time, then you don't need to do Dhamma practices because Dhamma practice is also empty and that's also false. And the material things in the world are all false. So the Tian Tai Sex said uh, that the three uh, views of Tian Tai, one is uh, the view of emptiness, of falsehood, and the middle way. So the view of emptiness, that's the first wisdom. The, and, then, and then the view on falsehood, that's the second wisdom, which is the wisdom of existence. So all the phenomena of existence at the end are all false, like a human being. Of course, it's they are false, because only when the four elements come together, it becomes a human being. But when they dissipate or disintegrate, then it's gone. So even if, if a human being is gone, so everything else is in is gone, so that's an aggregate. The houses, the cars, everything. So the money too, it's only because it's approved by a country, then it's useful. So the spirit money of Jupiter School, it's because Jupiter School approve it. That's why it's useful, otherwise it's only paper. Like uh, the dollar, uh, the banknotes, the hundred dollars, Franklin <laughs> banknotes, U.S. dollars, one hundred U.S. dollar bills. I heard there's also a, a thousand and ten thousand U.S. dollar banknote, just one piece for ten thousand. That's only used between banks. Do you know? One thousand and ten thousand bank notes. But what's popular is one hundred dollar bills. But the banks use 
一千一千块美金这样子，就是因为政府承认这个是有用的，才变成有用的。So only because the government approves it, that's why they can be used. Otherwise, it is papers even harder to use than the toilet papers. Actually, they are all fake. The money too. It's because uh, they. Said that uh, they can be used. That's why we can use them. And also the precious jewels, the precious gems. They're all just minerals. Everything that we wear, they, this is all plants. So plants, minerals, like the diamonds. Well, because people recognize them to be diamonds, otherwise it's just like a shiny rocks or stones. They are all false. So the Tian Tai Sex said that all existences are false. So emptiness, falsehood, and the middle way. That's the wisdom of the Tathagata. So you cannot go to the extreme of nihilism or existentialism. Because if you are too attached to emptiness, then you become a nihilism. So when you balance the two, then that would be the middle way. So Buddhism talks about the middle way, or Madhyamaka, and also Yogacara, or consciousness only. Because ultimately, there is a consciousness called the Immaculate Consciousness. So the Madhyamaka ultimately would be completely balanced and will allow attainment. So there are three kinds of great wisdoms. One is yi qi zi, second dao zhong zi, third yi qi zhong zi. So the wisdom of everything is emptiness. The first one talking about and the second one is talking about existence that are false and third is the wisdom of the Tathagata talking about the middle. So all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas have comprehended this kind of wisdom. That's why it's called the Great Wisdoms. The Great Wisdoms talking about these three. One is about emptiness, falsehood, and the middle. The middle way or the middle. So these are the three views of the Tian Tai sect. So Yi Qi Zi, Dao Zhong Zi, and Yi Qi Zhong Zi. So the wisdom of emptiness, the wisdom of existence, and falsehood, and the wisdom of the Tathagata, or the Buddha. So so do you understand? So whatever you encounter, you just use the visualization of emptiness. Then you will have no more afflictions and attachments to self. And then for the second wisdom, that you have to do the Dharma practices so that you can enter into the wisdom of the Tathagata. Because the Dharma is also false. It's written in the Vajra Sutra that you need to forsake the Dharma uh, and not to mention, let alone the non-Dharma. So you have to abandon the Buddha Dharma in order to have attainment. When you have reached a certain fruition and above, then you don't need the Dharma anymore. You have to forsake them. Once you attain Buddhahood, why do you still have to do the practice? That would be the path of no practice. Because amid the no practice, 
you're also practicing, so no practice is the same as practice. That's the highest realm, that you don't need any more dharma. Dharma practices then. And you need to adjust between emptiness and existence so they are completely uh, balanced. And, and after you are uh, balancing until ultimately it would be you would reach the consciousness only which is the immaculate consciousness that it's completely pure immaculate consciousness pure immaculate consciousness the balancing has to be completely uniform it's very difficult to explain but uh, just for you to get the idea mm, Five years ago, for my mistress, I bought uh, it million anti dollars house for her, and then fifty thousand a month for her, and then we broke up. So I sold the house, and I earned. 20 million. So I enjoyed a mistress for five years and still uh, earned a profit. And so thanks to the country, thanks to the uh, to the market that uh, having a mistress it turns to be an investment. And then the wife got to know about it and slapped me and said, why did you only have one mistress? Hmm, how come the mistress didn't want the house to be on her name. Maybe she's a Buddhist. She understands about a uh, visceral nation of emptiness, that the house is of no use after you die. But when you're old, it's still useful to you. You would live in that house. So when he bought the house, that it should have been under the mistress's name. But he bought the house under his own name to let the mistress live. And then when they broke up, he just didn't have to spend any money. On the television, the expert said, if you spend a lot of money, if you often spend money, then uh, your worries will disappear 80% and you will increase your IQ and EQ by spending money. Hmm. It makes sense. However, where does the money come from? The expert had no idea. If the paparazzi, you know what the paparazzi is? Like the reporters who are after people's privacy. If they don't go after the celebrities, but uh, to go after the corrupt officials, so would the officials be uh, uh, be cured? No, 
but the paparazzi will be cured, quote unquote, will be taken care of. Ah, this question, this question, ask the dog. There is a girl. 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 Has a lot of worries, and she has a pet dog, and asked the dog, "How can I be as happy as you are?" And the dog replied, "Wang, wang, wang." Yeah, 叫了三声，汪汪汪。Arf, arf, arf. But in Chinese, sounds like forget, forget, forget. Wang, 那就没有啦。Just forget about it, then it will be gone. This is the visualization of emptiness. This is mindfulness of emptiness. Right? Every time I get on bed to sleep, I would say, forget, forget, forget. And then I'll fall asleep. Why? Why are you bringing all the worries of the daytime into your dreams? And why are you still thinking of them when you're falling asleep? You have to throw them out. Then you would fall asleep and you would sleep really well without any dreams. Forgetting is a good thing. Give me. Give me a cup of water. The the ambrosia that makes you forget. Not to talk about the word. So late. A kid asked his mom, "Mom, how come I'm the poor second generation? Second generation, second poor." And moms, and not the rich second generation. Oh, you're not the poor second generation, really? I didn't know. I, there's a secret I didn't know. And mom said, "Well, counting from your great 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 grandfathers, it's been eighteen generations of poverty, not a second." Oh, my God, you're home. Oh, my God, you're home.